will be discussed why you need an active CTOE. Nevertheless, some people would prefer passive CTOE. Therefore, let's go through why we need a passive CTOE. Before understanding why we need a passive CTOE, let's review the AC response of the passive CTOE and try to figure out how to implement the circuit of the passive CTOE from the available passive elements, which are resistors, inductors, capacitors. As you know, in Electronics 101, the inductor is quite bulky and difficult to tune the inductance easily. Therefore, that will not only add too much chip area, but also limit the response tunability of the past CTOE in the picking gain and picking frequency. Therefore, we can reduce the capacity and implement the passive CTOE with the RC network only. Let's go step by step to compose the AC response of the CTOE shown here. First of all, how to get the DC low frequency attenuation? Right, just a simple resistive divider with the R1 in series with the R2 shown here. Then the DC attenuation would be R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Second, how to get the high frequency attenuation? Bingo! The low frequency element is the resistors, and the high frequency element is the capacitor. Therefore, a simple capacitive divider with the C1 in series with the C2 will achieve the high frequency attenuation which is C1 divided by C1 plus C2. Please advise that there is no gain at the DC and high frequencies, and we call attenuation instead of gain to emphasize the loss one more time. But to emphasize the high frequency peaking or the high pass response, we may still call the peaking gain between the gain difference of the maximum high frequency gain and DC gain. After figuring out the attenuation image, we need to figure out how the frequency signals can be done from the RC network. Think about the time constants images for 5 seconds. Correct, we've known both the receptivity and capacity value must be connected from the input to the output together to implement both the DC and high frequency attenuation. In addition, from the peaking gain or characteristic of a high pass response, the R1 should be greater than R2, and the C1 should be greater than the C2, such that the DC attenuation is greater than the high frequency attenuation. From Electronics 101, time constant image, you know the low frequency zero may correlate to a big RC time constant. Therefore, the zero frequency of the high pass is mainly determined by the R1 times C1. Again, to make sure the high frequency attenuation is as small as possible, the C2 should be smaller than the C1. So, the 3 dB pole frequency of the high pass response would define by the pair of resistors R1 and R2 times the C1. Alright, after understanding how the passive CTOE was implemented, then think about its average images for 5 seconds. Such that you may know why we need it. Bingo! First, from the previous images of the attenuation, picking gain, pole, and zero frequencies, you should realize the implementation is simple without other complicated factors such that the active CTOE over PVT during the dynamic operation. The picking gain is only from the RC ratio and can be tuned accurately, 
such that the residual eyesight can be small enough and have enough BLA margin. Also, owing to its equation accuracy, people claim the passive CTOE can equalize the channel as effectively as the discrete time equalizer, like FAV or DFE. Second, that's obvious the power consumption is little, but that might not help the whole power budget of the link. Can you think about another applied imagery? Correct. If the RX is on the thin side of a mobile device and the TX is not a mobile device, then we could increase the TX power or swing, but keep the RX power of the mobile device as little as possible. Then the passive CTOE will save power quite a lot in a very specific usage. Third, the active device or the transistor will suffer from linearity. But fortunately, the passive RC elements will not. Therefore, the active CTOE and the link interface will measure by either the input common mode voltage or the input swing dynamically, and then the linearity of the active CTOE would reduce either the I width or I high from the input swing. That's obvious since most of the high channel loss would have a very big swing, greater than 800 millivolt at the CTOE input. But for the input common mode voltage, there are so many possibilities. For example, the input common mode voltage could come from the DC couple of the TX output common mode voltage, which is noisy and is not optimal level to high or to low for active CTOS DC bias point. Even though the CTOS input common mode voltage came from its own VCM generation, isolated from an AC couple connection, the DC voltage level could still vary over PVT and still not be optimal. Therefore, in a PCIe compliance, the input common mode would be one of the external impairments for the stress eye test, which is called common mode sinusoidal interference CMSI, and we'll talk about that later in other PCIe video. On the other hand, the passive CTOE would have better linearity no matter what the input swing or the input common mode voltage is, since it inherently has a better immunity. Therefore, many people would prefer passive CTOE, which could tolerate the external impairments in addition to its intrinsic good linearity. After we summarize all the advantage images of the passive CTOE. Do you have others? Think about the bandwidth images for 5 seconds. Perfect. The feedforward capacitor C1 of the passive RC networks would enhance the bandwidth of the RX front end. As we discussed, the C1 should not be much bigger than the C2, but also should be much bigger than any other capacitor to the ground path, which limits the bandwidth. So the C1 was indeed help the RX bandwidth and input impedance measure in addition to any front end coils. But to the accuracy of the equation of the passive CTOE, what is programmability advantage? Think about the switch images for 5 seconds. Yes, as we discussed in the white CTOE video, the CTOE's tunability for a different channel loss profile is a must to accommodate different media in any link. To adjust or tune the R1, R2, C1, and C2 values, we may just need to add switch in series with those passive elements, as long as those Switch's impedance was small enough compared to those passive elements, 
the linearity of the RC network is still good enough. The last beauty of the RC network is that we could vary the values of the R1, R2, C1, and C2 respectively. Therefore, the tuned DC attenuation, high frequency attenuation, peaking gain, zero, and pole frequencies can be implemented independently. Therefore, the passive CTOE's high pass response may have more flexibility or tunability to be the inverse of the channel's low pass response properly. Here is the summarized image of why we need a passive CTOE to make the chip area small in a compact floor plan and tunable easily. People prefer not to use the inductors from the passive elements. Therefore, the RC network would achieve the high pass response easily and have several advantages over the active CTOE. First, the accuracy of the equation could be more precise and robust than the active CTOE over PVT in a dynamic varying environment. Therefore, the eye opening, eye width, and eye height of the residual ISI would be much bigger over PVT robustly. If the RX is a mobile device, the low power is a must, and the passive CTOE could provide greater power saving. To enhance eye opening, good linearity is a must. Unfortunately, the active CTOE will not only have changes in a good linearity design, but also has less immunity to the huge input swing or non-optimal input common mode voltage or noise. On the other hand, the passive CTOE will not only have an intrinsic good linearity, but also have a higher tolerance of input swing and impairments of the input common mode voltage. Lastly, the values of the R1, R2, C1, and C2 can be tuned respectively. Then, unlike the active CTOE, we could decouple the dependency of the tuned DC attenuation, high frequency attenuation, peaking gain, zero, and pole frequencies from each other. Therefore, the passive CTOE's high pass response may have more flexibility or tunability to be the inverse of the channel's low pass response properly. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback and place your comments down below. Lastly, place share the video link with the people who may be benefiting from it.